up my beautiful Glamazons? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this week's Ask Nikki. I know that so many of you guys are going through so much, especially right now, and just need an ear or just need some advice from your girl and from all of your Glamazons. So we are going to do this today. Welcome to the new, new place to film. Every time I feel like I found my spot, things got to move around. But you know what? We got to roll with the flow. The show's got to still go on. Let's do this. I know that so many of you guys try to email me and have so many situations that you guys are dealing with that y'all want my mediocre advice on and I know that I can't get to every single one of you guys during my videos as much as I would like to so if I don't read your email today please don't be discouraged I would like to if you guys are open to the idea let me know your thoughts down below but I was thinking about maybe hosting like a once a week live on my Instagram just doing ask Nikki so it'll be the same type of concept you know I'll be giving my mediocre advice and then you know all of us can kind of exchange ideas and stuff anyways today I'm going to be reading as many emails as I possibly can. So make sure you grab your wine, grab your snacks. Girl, I got my wine right here because I know I'm going to need it. And also, <laughs> I got my thakis. Have you guys ever just like picked that perfect bag of thakis that are just like so well seasoned and just... Mm. Mm, mm, mm. If you're new to my channel, what's up? Welcome. My name is Nikki and I do story times, advice videos, fashion videos, makeup videos if I feel like it. So I hope you enjoy yourself. If you do, I would love to have you be a part of my glam fam. Just hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you are not missing out on any of your girl's new videos. I'm gonna pick out our Glamazon shot real quick and give her a little shout out. Here are my handles. If you're not following me, please do. If you would like your chance to be my Glamazon shot of the day, just send over your cutest selfie. Your Twitter or Instagram, I toggle between the two. Use your hashtag Glamazon shot and of course tag your girl. Wait, I know you really want my home skillet biscuit so today i'm gonna be going through twitter because i know that i went through instagram last time y'all i was straight up so confused stacy okay everybody say what's up to our girl stacy you can find her on twitter at stacy woods x okay now look at this photo when i saw this photo on my timeline that said glamazon on shot do you know who you look like like see, straight up you are her twin luster lux you guys katie she looks just like katie <laughs> Girl, you are so gorgeous. Thank you so much for all of your love. And you should know you look just like Haiti. Anyways, thank you guys so much for all of your love and support. You guys know that I would not be here without you. And I could not do this without each and every one of you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now let's have some wine, girl. I'll talk about what y'all going through. How my mediocre advice can help. So we're just going to jump right into this. Because like I said, I want to get through as many emails as I possibly can. Okay, so strap in. Jumping into our first email. The subject line is my brother or my niece. Dear Nikki, I just want to first say that I love you, your family, and both channels. You have literally gotten me through some of the deepest, darkest, emotional places I have been. I hope you are all staying safe. Thank you. So here's the thing. My niece was sexually harassed by my brother and I don't know what to do. Let's go ahead with the trigger warning. Um, we're going to be talking about something really serious right now. And as most of y'all know, I know that these are triggering topics, but I feel like they should still be discussed because people go through these things and sometimes they just don't know what to do. If, if you are easily triggered by stories of abuse or harassment or assault or anything like that, please skip forward to the next email, okay? So here's the backstory. My dad is a hoe, so he has a plethora of children with me being the last. So my niece is only a few months younger than me. Anyway, she and her partner live on their own in one state. She developed a relationship with my brother and has really been one of the only ones in the family that was able to keep in touch with him. They've been talking about meeting up with each other for at least a year because it's been almost five since they've seen each other. So he pleaded with her to come visit him after his wife left him. She agreed because he's a veteran with a slew of mental health conditions. She wanted to check on him and see for herself if he was okay. So she flew out to see him on her own dime, by the way. When she got there, the house was a slum and there was only one bed. You're a fierce mama bear, so I will spare you specifics for the sake of your blood pressure. But even though he didn't assault her, he violated her personal space and crossed lines that should not be crossed. Sleeping in one bed with her with nothing but boxers on and telling her, baby, I love you, are just the tip of the iceberg. She called me on FaceTime on my birthday to tell me what had been going on for the past two days and for me to witness. Girl, I was disgusted, but I also felt helpless because there was no way I could get to her or help her or send help to her. So I stayed up for hours to make sure she was safe and screen recording bits of him being inappropriate. Fast forward to her getting home and she sent me screenshots of the message he sent her and I lost my shit. I called him, cussed his ass out from sunup to sundown. She felt so violated because this is not the first trauma she has experienced in 
our family. I felt it was my job to be the first in our family to stand up for her and protect her the way someone else should have. So my question is this, do I completely cut my brother off, no hope of reconnecting, or do I leave the door open a sliver in case he can see the hurt he caused, apologize, and give her the space to heal? Please help. I'm torn because we were just beginning to build a relationship, but I've had a bond with my niece since we were little. Love your Glamazon. Girl, shit. This is such a hard situation to be in. So what do you do when someone like the likes of your brother, your sibling, hurts your niece or, you know, a younger person in the family? Do you cut off your sibling? Do you or do you leave room for healing and, you know, moving forward? I like how you prefaced the whole story with your dad as a hoe to explain why you and your niece are so close in age. So you and her are close in age. It's almost like you guys are sisters. Like that's the kind of, that's kind of what I'm getting from y'all's relationship. Just reading your story. You developed a relationship with your brother. Been the only one pretty much in the family to keep in touch with him. And I'm wondering why. Like is he kind of like the outcast like how come nobody is like keeping in touch with him how come he's he doesn't come you know with family like what is that about because of that and he's so disconnected she has not seen him for five years so they had been talking about meeting up she finally decides to go and meet with him in person one big reason why is because he's a veteran with a bunch of mental health issues so she goes over there um to go check on him and make sure that he's okay and she goes there to find him living in a shitty house. He violated her personal space. You you say that he didn't assault her, but he did violate her personal space and cross lines that should not be crossed. So she FaceTimes you on your birthday and says, hey, all of this is happening. I feel weird. I feel disgusting. Like, I don't want to be here. And um, you don't know what to do. You feel helpless. And so finally, you kind of see little bits during the FaceTime, like of him being inappropriate and being ridiculous. And so finally, she gets home and she's safe, but she tells you, you know, more things that he did while she was there visiting him and she sent me a screenshot of the message she sent her so i don't know what was in that message i'm guessing it was like vulgar and just crass and terrible because you called your brother custom up one side and down the other which i would have done too so your question is do you completely cut your brother off with no hope of ever reconnecting or do you leave the door open a sliver in case he can see the hurt he caused, apologize and give her the space to heal? When it comes to situations like this, it's very delicate because there's somebody involved that is the victim in this situation, right? And whether it's like full on assault or it's just like groping and doing this, like that is that is an invasion of someone's space and that's sexual harassment and that's like a whole slew of like problems okay like if it's unwanted touching and if it's like this whispering and it's making you feel uncomfortable it's not okay like it it doesn't make it any more acceptable just because it wasn't like a full-on attack does that make sense it was still probably a traumatic experience for your niece what the hell is she supposed to do this man has mental issues she's there by herself and i'm just gonna say this okay Hey, honey bunch because I love you but I'm here to be like you know your cousin big sister and I'm here to give it to you straight okay I would not have allowed her to go over there by herself knowing that he is a veteran with mental issues because you know there is a thing called PTSD and sometimes you know it could be and, you know, depending on the severity of it, somebody could be in danger. You know, you don't know how he may react to certain things. And at, honestly, she doesn't know him that well. So at the end of the day, me personally, I would not have like been down with her to go by herself, you know? And this is not in any way to say that this was your fault at all. I'm just saying like, I would have been concernicus from the beginning. This happened, now what do you do, okay? You've already called your brother and said, hey, what the fuck, like, why are you doing this, this and that? At the end of the day, when it comes to somebody else being abused like that or being traumatized like that, I feel like it should solely be in the hands of the person that went through it. It is, I think that that person should should be the lead does that make sense so you follow that person's lead because their feelings matter in this so in a nutshell what i'm saying is that i feel like your niece to be the person to 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 lead this entire situation does she want to try to make amends with him is she open to hearing an apology from him if you know he does see his wrongdoing could she see moving forward from this or is she completely and utterly done and like she's 
really traumatized and she wants nothing to do with it. Whatever decision that she makes, that's the decision that I would follow. I don't take things like that lightly when it comes to people getting hurt like that or being scared that way or, you know, being harassed like that or, you know, I, I just don't like it. It's, you know, this is family. This is family. And look, she's, she, you already said that she already had, this was not her first traumatic experience. She had had other bad experiences with other family members. Like, no, he had no business coming at her like that. That is his niece. What is wrong with him? You know, and I get that he has um, his mental issues, but again, that does not take away from what your niece experienced, regardless of his mental issues. Okay. Now she knows that as well and she can process that and, and decide whether or not she can move forward with the relationship with him but if she can't you have to understand that it's because it damaged her so bad or it scared her so bad or she's traumatized and and we don't I don't know how far he went you know and I'm not going to sit there and like hop over her feelings and be like oh well you know I don't deem this enough to cut him off no no it's enough She's already been hurt enough. So I think that you did the right thing. And I think that you, like you said, being the first to stand up for somebody, I think that was very big of you. And I think that you were breaking generational curses in that moment, which is good on you, girl. Good on you for standing up for her because I think in a lot of situations, more often times than not, the victim is not being believed, okay? And like, it's not, it's not okay to do that. So here's what I'm gonna say. I think that whatever decision that your niece makes needs to be respected. And I think that her feeling the backing of you like, hey, what I'm going to respect whatever decision you make, honey. Okay, like if you don't want to ever see him or talk to him again, we don't have to do that. I am in, I am with you on this. I stand with you. I believe you 100% and you don't have to go through nothing from nobody. I'm going to stand behind you now. If you feel like, you know what, he's just going through his thing. He may have PTSD and, and you think that you can work through this. I'm going to hold your hand through that as well. Like whatever it is that you want to do, but I'm not making a move without you. So that's how I would handle it. That's my advice. Glamazons, let our girl know up in the polls down in the comment section below how would you deal with this situation would you just completely like choose your niece 100 percent, or would you kind of try to be a mediator between the two let me know your thoughts on this. this is a very delicate situation but this type of thing happens unfortunately so what do you do and i just feel like this perpetual issue of not believing victims and then continuing to have relationships with the people that hurt them it's just too much like it i i just don't i don't support that i just can't that would break my heart you know what i'm saying to to know that because i didn't do something or i didn't believe somebody that they're having to live in that pain every day and and that fear as well because that's very scary i hope that that my advice helped you and definitely check out the polls check out the comments see what your fellow glamazons are saying i wish you and your niece nothing but blessings and happiness girl so i hope this helps Mwah. Bro, that started out a little heavy. On to the next email. So the next email is from our girl. Her subject line is, I keep having dreams and signs pointing to my old crush in high school. All right, we're going to be talking about the dreams. The dreams. Hey, Nikki. My name is Emily, and I've been a fan of yours for about three years now. I absolutely love your videos and watch them over and over again. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so to start this story, I've had a crush on this boy for six years. <laughs> Ever since middle school, I'm a freshman in college right now and I still haven't gotten over him. I've tried to put away my feelings for him, but I just can't do it. It wasn't until senior year when I began to talk to him. It was around October. I DM'd him on Instagram and did the whole, hey, do you know what the assignment was deal? But here's the thing. Everyone, and I mean everyone in school, knew who he was. He was the player of the school and has had rumors about him going from one person to another. Anyways, I started talking to him and for the entire month, just talked. Slowly but surely, I got to know him more and more and he didn't seem like the person everyone said he was. All my friends have told me to stay away from him because I am the complete opposite of what he is. He's also told me about my flaws or what I think are flaws. He's told me that I have anxiety, I'm uptight, I'm too quiet in class, etc. One day I found out that he smokes and drinks. I know that that's not a big deal to a lot of people, but my dad does the same thing too and I don't want that kind of thing 
to affect my relationship and my life again. Fast forward to now, I keep seeing him in my dreams and they're happy dreams like being in love, having a family, getting married even. And I've also been seeing his initials and his birthday almost all the time on anything like the time, emails, YouTube video timestamps. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. I have no idea if this is a sign that I should start talking to him again or if it's something that has to do with him is affecting me or if my mind is just constantly making up scenarios of him because I still have an underlying feeling for him. I'm only 18. I know I'm young and I'm going to have different relationships throughout my life, but this is just one that I cannot let go of. If you have any advice for my situation, please just give me anything. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate you reading my email. Love you. Love you. You got the good old case of can't get him off your brain, girl. That's a look. Okay. So this is actually very cute. Um, you have had a crush on this boy for six years now, okay? And you already in college. You've had a crush on him since middle school. Now y'all didn't start talking, talking though until senior year, of course. Everybody wants to start talking senior year when y'all know y'all gotta graduate and go off to different colleges, just make it way more complicated. It's like when you know that your time is like ending, all of a sudden you'll get like these, this courage to finally talk to this person. It's October and you DM him real quick like, like, hey, what's the assignment, big head? <laughs> You guys kind of start talking. Now the problem is, of course, there's a problem. He is and is well known to be the school player, 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 okay? So many girls know about him and there's so many rumors about him jumping from one person to another, but you knew this and you still kept talking to him and y'all were talking and stuff and you started getting to know him and for an entire month you guys are talking. Now, you say that he does not seem like the person that everyone said he was and this is very interesting. You also said that he has told you about your flaws or what you think are your flaws. He's told you that you have anxiety and that you're uptight and too quiet in class and things like that. So found out that he smokes and drinks and your dad has the same bad habits. So you don't want anything to do with that or like having it affect your life anymore. So that was kind of a turn off. Fast forward to now and you keep seeing him in your dreams and you guys are like in love and happy and having families and getting married and shit in your dreams. So like, is this like low key, like your, your spirit telling you that this is your husband, that you're like supposed to be with him, like you're supposed to start a whole life with him? No, it does not. It does not mean that, okay? Let me, let me tell you, don't get it twisted, okay? Don't be trying to change up shit and start and stuff with a dude that may or may not have gotten over that alcohol and you know, that drinking problem and stuff just because your dreams, girl, dreams don't make no sense. I may be one of the only people that thinks this. I don't know. I'm just saying that like I've had some crazy ass dreams would never happen in a million trillion years. And like I've had dreams about people from my past, you know, and like that don't mean I'm trying to go back. I'm not trying. That does not mean nothing. Sorry. No, I'm not mad that they're even in my dreams, you know? I think the fact that he tried to read you, okay? Dudes try to do that to, like, make it seem like they know you better than you know yourself. And, like, I don't know, like, mysterious, be, like, mysterious and, like, all-knowing. And it's, girl, it's game. I'm telling you it's game. I have seen it a million times. Where they, like, they straight up try to read you and they're, like, you know, you're just really high high intensity you know you just have really high levels of anxiety and i just i just think that you should like open up more you know like you're just really closed off and you just have like a wall and like you know you just really need to learn how to let down that wall and love again sorry my wall doesn't like bullshit, sir okay thank you i've seen this play out so many times and i have very little faith and dudes that have that type of reputation that precedes them, okay? Because that reputation is in place for a reason, all right? Don't think that just because I'm giving you this advice that I ain't never falling for it. I'm giving you this advice because I am falling for it, okay? I've had the dude that was like definitely the school player and all of a sudden he's looking at me and I'm like, hey, way, what you mean? And I know that I shouldn't talk to him, but I talk to him anyway and I'm like, you know what? Maybe I can make him change. Like maybe I'm that person. And then we start talking and I'm like, oh my God, he's not like anything like that. You know, he's real sweet and just like really genuine. And then, 
then you find out that same game and that genuineness all that bullshit you find out that he said the same shit to that girl over there and that girl over there and they all try to tell you and they sitting there looking at you like mm -hmm. it's very rare that a dude's like oh yeah i know that i have this reputation but i totally changed as a person for you like, sometimes when a person takes that much interest in you it's just like oh my god yes like this is the one but no girl you need to find the one that wants to learn about you and not tell you about you okay i don't need nobody telling me who i am what i am those things that he named are not flaws about you girl that's just you like just because you're too quiet in class like that's not a bad thing maybe you're just more of a creative mind maybe you're a great listener maybe not everything is about you you know what i'm saying like that's not a flaw but he be trying to act like he knows somebody girl like i just see game written all over this i think that you are wanting like the family and marriage and love and all of that just like everybody else and like you know finding that perfect one and i think that like the closest you've gotten right now up until this point has been him so i think that you're just like sticking a face onto that in, she, in your dreams girl but it doesn't mean that it's him him so I, I wouldn't say that this is like a reason to reach out to him um but if you want to just like say hey what's up just for the sake of saying hey what's up then do that but like don't do that with the expectations of your dreams coming true girl because you never know he may not have been able to kick those bad habits and there you made a really good choice because you don't want your life to be infiltrated with the bs that your dad put you through you know what i'm saying so no i just I don't feel like playing any games, you know? My advice is to just like keep living your life, boo. Like if you want to reach out to him to say, hey, what's up? You can do like do that, but don't expect like a relationship out of it and for like your dream to come true about marriage and all this. And girl, it's probably not that deep. So that is my advice. Glamazons, let her know up in the polls, down in the comments. Do you feel like her dreams are kind of like a premonition? Do you feel like there are truths to dreams? And I know that there are some people that have had dreams and those dreams have indeed come true. We'll sit here and say that I believe that's a rarity, okay? It's not all the time that that happens. I wish. <laughs> that's my take on your situation, girl. I hope that this helps. Check out the polls. Check out the comments. See what your fellow Glamazons are saying. I love you, and I hope you are staying safe during this time. Mwah. Next email is from our girl, and her subject line is pregnant during COVID-19. You know, honestly, straight up, like, I have been so worried for expectant mothers. I had Mila the day after Christmas and I feel like the minute that the new year hit like everything kind of went to shit so I'm just so thankful that I was able to like have Mila before all of this happened because how scary you're supposed to keep your stress levels down when you're pregnant I just feel for y'all and I'm sending out all of my prayers to you guys for safety and good health for you and your baby. Hey Nikki, it's your girl. I could really use some advice. I'm 22 years old and have been with the same guy for the last seven years. We've been through a lot together and have had some rough patches, but overall we have a very strong and beautiful relationship and he has always been a good man. So anyways, around September of last year, we broke up for a short amount of time. It was pretty mutual and we both felt we had grown apart, but after taking time apart, to think and work on ourselves we realized we still had so much love for each other and both could have been putting more effort into the growth of our relationship we got back together and have been better ever since our relationship felt stronger than ever but now something has been thrown into the mix i'm pregnant I found out a couple weeks ago and told my man only a few days ago. Although I am a bit excited about this new addition, I'm also terrified of how it may affect our relationship. We have had talks in the past and I always said I was open to having kids whenever, but my boyfriend always made it apparent he'd prefer to wait at least a few years and until we're both stable in our careers because he wants to give the best to his kids, which I totally get. But now we're here and I'm not comfortable getting an abortion and although he never even asked me to, I can tell he was hoping that I was going to say that I was. I know he will be there for me and do his best to do the right thing, but I also feel guilty for making him do this. I know it takes two to tango, but I still can't help but feel bad. He says he isn't ready for this, but he's willing to go through it together because he loves me. But I'm scared that this could change our relationship and he might start pulling away from me emotionally if this is too stressful for him. I get why he's scared. I am too. But I know going through with this pregnancy is the best option for me. But is it worth putting my relationship on the line? It's weird that I'm more worried about how this could affect our relationship than actually having a baby itself. 
please let me know if my feelings are rational and maybe what you think I should do in order to make sure my relationship grows instead of suffers. I love you. Sending your family love. XO. Girl, I love you too. Congratulations on your pregnancy, my love. I know through the midst of all of this, how crazy and congratulations, first of all. Now let's talk about your situation. I'm, I'm going to say this right off the bat. When I read the subject line of your email, I thought that you were going to talk to me about like the issues with having like with being pregnant during this virus problem seeing the doctor and 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 like that sort of thing but this is more so about your relationships the girl's 22 she's been with her mans for seven years and they broke up for a very small amount of time then they got back together and now she's pregnant. Our girl is pregnant and expecting. Your man has always wanted to wait for kids and now like all of a sudden this is happening and you feel like he was kind of like low key disappointed when you didn't consider any other options, you know what I'm saying? And now you feel guilty. Now you feel guilty because you're making him do this and this and that and you did say yes It takes two to tango, but you still feel bad and you don't want him to to you know Distance himself from you and all that and I get all of that But I'm gonna be straight up with you. You shouldn't be worried about none of that Okay, like you are the one pregnant right now, honey bunch You are now pregnant and the decision has been made whether he likes it or not and like you guys have been together for almost a decade. I know that it may not have been his ideal situation, but he's got to get like it is what it is. Like we got to buck up and be grown ups now. The risk is well known to all parties involved. So if that were to happen, well, you know, it is in my opinion up to the mother to decide her what she wants to do and it's his job to support that decision regardless. Why are you feeling bad? Why are you feeling bad? Girl, no, you don't need to be feeling bad for nothing. Look, I get that you want your relationship to last through this. And here's what I can tell you. If you want to, like if it were me and I felt like, oh, my man's is kind of like freaking out. I would talk to him and be like, hey, you need to know that like I'm not peaches and cream over here i'm not like sunshine and rainbows over here okay i'm scared too like what you just said you know i know that he's scared i'm scared too i think that you need to vocalize that to him and let him know like i'm not going into this thinking that everything is going to be okay i'm freaking out too and like this is i'm going through this right along with you and we gotta like be partners and teammates and lovers through this together because now we're we're making we made a human we're making a human together this is happening and like we, if we're going to be scared we're going to be scared together you know what i'm saying if david and i are ever going through anything we always try to relate to one another like hey you feel this way i feel this way too like you're not in this alone and he needs to make sure that he's taken as much as you're worried about his emotional well-being he needs to be just as concerned if not more so about your emotional well-being and being there for you because right now you're you're going through I get it I get that y'all made this baby together but no 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 the pregnancy and the labor and delivery and all that that's all you homegirl that's you he needs to be there supporting you I don't give a damn about his feelings right now I really don't and I'm not trying to be like you know that one to be getting all upset and like I'm not trying to be rude I'm just saying like why you know like <laughs> You didn't put yourself in this situation by yourself, okay? And he needs to be sensitive to the fact that you are scared too. And this is actually happening to you, like to your body. I need you to be my partner and be my homie and like help me get through this. And we be there for each other and we worry about each other. But don't you sit there and be just worried about him, girl, because you, you're right. You worry, you're so worried about him that you're not realizing you are about to have a baby. And yes, there is a virus going on right now and you need to be very careful. You you need to be focused on that and the health of your baby during this time. Your man's come second place now and forever. That's my advice. Um, if anything, I would just have a conversation with my man and be like, hey, same, same. Okay, we in the same boat. Like, don't, don't you dare try to distance yourself and get all freaked out and do all that. Like, you can be freaked out and everything, but like, be freaked out with me. You know, like, I'm here going through this exact same thing with you. And I feel like so many couples forget to just like relate to each other and be like, the reason why you acting out is because you feel like nobody understands you and like, like you're freaking out on your own and you're not. Like, I'm freaking out too, be Like, that's what I would do. Glamazons, how would you tell our girl to handle this situation with her mans and he? He may not be feeling 100% about them having a baby. Let me know your thoughts up in the polls and especially down in the comment section below. Um, but in my opinion, in my humble opinion, girl, your 
emotional and physical well-being and your baby's well-being is top priority right now. So, I would tell him that he needs to get it all the way together because he's about to be a daddy. I hope this helps. Check out the polls, check out the comments. Hope for a safe and easy delivery and I hope for a healthy baby and just happiness and love, girl. I'm sending all of the positive vibes. On to the next email. We're getting into some tea, girl. All right, let's talk about it. This is from our girl. Her subject line is, I really love my boyfriend but I also wanna be young. Hey Nikki, first off, let me say that I love you and look up to you so much. You're hilarious and I feel like we're besties. Girl, we are besties, yes, girl, what? Now to explain, I'm 19 and my boyfriend is two. We've been together for almost a year and a half now. He's my best friend and we are always talking about a future together, like moving into an apartment when we graduate. We met at college and we've been attached at the hip since we met. Last summer, we broke up for about a month or two where I started seeing this other guy. When when we got back together, I immediately established boundaries to remain friends with this guy because we actually work together when I'm home from school. Uh huh. Well, after a while, he just wasn't being respectful and we stopped being friends. But it's almost a year later and I still can't stop thinking about him. We started talking again and I feel guilty even though I make sure not to engage in his flirting. They are both very different guys and I know I love my relationship but a part of me wants to explore other options. I'm unsure of how to feel or think because part of me knows that a majority of the urge to interact with this guy is basically just lust and vice versa. I know it wouldn't be worth ruining such a great relationship over. I guess I just need any advice I can get because I've been too shy to ask anyone about it. Thank you in advance. Girl, let's just talk about your situation, okay? First of all, I don't think that you should be feeling bad at all. This is real as hell. It's very real of you to like, you know, come forward and be like, hey, I might be a little bit too young. I don't know about all this. Like I might need a little bit of flirt action, whatever. And like you said, it could just be lust or just whatever but when else are you supposed to do that you know like you have this portion of your life to get your flirt on and to date different people and do this and do that i'm not saying that being in a serious relationship at 19 years old is a bad idea hello i got with my now husband when i was 19 years old however i would say like the first year to year and a half of my relationship with david just around where you are in your relationship right now girl i i started feeling the same way but i was starting to feel um this way not because i had any interest in any other dudes but because i felt myself falling so heavily for david very fast and i was like planning everything you know for our life and i was like this is the person i'm gonna be with like forever and i was trying to like check myself like am i being realistic right now this is getting very serious very fast like is this what i'm looking for a hundred percent and i had to really ask myself am i done am i done dipping my toe into like the singles pool am i okay with being with this one person for Ever. not wanting or needing that attention from anybody else besides him am i okay with that and if the answer is no girl that's fine that is okay if if you're like hey i don't know i just need a minute like can we you know it's okay to say i just need a break you know to explore to you know try new things there's nothing wrong with that and on the flip side to that, if you decide, you know what, this is the love of my life, okay? And you do a Nikki and you just go head first and you're like, this is the one, that's okay too. Like, it's all up to you. It's a decision that we all have to make, girl, and it's fine whichever way that you feel. But whatever decision that you make, you gotta stand by it 100%. And I know that it's a really hard decision, but you don't want to you know, say, hey, I wanna stay in this relationship and then continue to like crave the attention from other dudes or like the flirting. There's nothing wrong with liking those things, but you, you, if you need to experience that girl, just go experience it. And if this relationship is meant to be, you guys will find each other, like it will happen. And I know that it seems very selfish to do that, but like literally there's no other time in life for you to be selfish, girl, do it. Whatever it is that you wanna do. If you were madly in love with this man and this is all you need and all you want and like everything to you, then you stay. And if not, and you wanna go have some fun and you might wanna go talk to this other cutie and you wanna do this and do that, go do that. Like just don't 
don't tie yourself down you're not like 110 15 20 35 40 45 50 percent sure that that is the relationship that you want to be in i just don't want you to have any regrets and i don't want you to waste any time and i don't want you to um have no experiences when you deep down wanted experiences you know what i'm saying it was just falling so deep for david and then i started realizing like when other dudes hit on me i would just immediately i was just like uh, or i don't know just like their vibe was off and i just did not get along with anybody else i didn't find myself thinking about anybody else like he was just my everything still is my everything and so when i when i kind of I was like, you know, I like, I don't need, I don't, I like, if that dude called me pretty right now, like, I wouldn't care, you know, like, I don't care, like, I have, yes, I have this, and it's okay to feel either way, so I was like, you know what, I'm cool with not, <laughs> we're not dipping my toe into that pool no more like i did i personally just decided against it and thank god it. decision you make just make sure that you're happy that at the end of the day you are 100 fine with it okay so amazons let our girl know in the polls should she stay in this relationship if it's great or should she kind of go explore and go have some fun and see if this works out maybe later who knows just wish you the best and i just want you to have fun and enjoy your life so whatever is going to make you happy I'm down for it. So that is all the time I got today, y'all. Straight up, my camera is overheating on me and it's like, beach, I need you to stop. So I'ma go now, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know. Also, let me know down in the comments. I will also probably take a poll on my Twitter or Instagram. So make sure you guys follow me in regards to having maybe a weekly live where we do Ask Nikki's on Instagram Live or something like that. We'll figure it out together, but let me know your thoughts on that. Um, if you're not a part of my glam fam and you've watch this video you like what you see you feel in the vibes girl definitely become a part of my glam fam i would love to have you hit that subscribe button i will be coming back at you with some fashion videos and some story time so make sure you guys are here hit that notification bell follow me on my socials i love you guys so much and i will see you very soon in my next video peace out girl now i have to finish my thoughties. <laughs>